afternoon again. I'm Dave, and this is Chris Penn, all the way from Portland, Oregon. Chris, make your magic work. You know, when I cut that red wire yesterday... I told you not to cut the red wire. I just accidentally cut it. <laughs> and lo and behold, we got ourselves the exploded view unit. Damn, I hate when that happens. I know, right? So but you know what? Let's take advantage of that. Let's take advantage of that. Today, we're going to talk about the sensors um, as we got this thing cut away. Um, or are blown to pieces, if you will. Um, as we talk about the sensors with, with an Ultra and, and really all our product line across the board, it really truly is all about the sensors, right? It takes the, the, the sensors and the input that, that dictates the speed and operation of this unit, right? You know, this is, a, this is an actual motherboard of a computer right here. This is a computer board Absolutely. that's doing all the brains and all it these is. sensors do is just give input and say, do this or do that. And that's right. And so with the Ultra being as, as efficient as it is, 100% capacity at five degrees, there are some sensors along with that EVI technology, enhanced vapor injection, there are some additional sensors that are different than what we're used to. Okay. All right. So we're gonna take a few minutes and we're gonna go through and we are gonna kind of give you an idea of where these sensors are um, and, and where they're located. Um, Let's start numerically in that, Chris. Let's go all the way from one through. So we'll start with T1. T1, we've got a T1 sensor, which is a return air sensor. That T1 sensor is located in the indoor air handler. On the air handler, not in the compressor It's kind of down below, kind of goes through the apex, stores up up underneath on the right-hand side. And Chris, how does that information get out to this unit? It's got to be communicating. It's we're, communicating. We're going to send a, a two-wire shielded cable. We're going to communicate between indoor and outdoor, and that's how we're going to be able to see the value of that T1. A T1, there you go. Exactly. We also got a T2 sensor. Wow. T2 sensor is very similar to what we had before. That T2 sensor is used for anti-cold blow. Okay. That T2 sensor has been relocated. It's also on the indoor unit, but it's been relocated to the front side of the evaporator coil and not near the TXV where it was currently. You said something that might be intriguing to some people. Anti-cold blow. What, An what do we do? What, what's, what is that? Well, in the heat mode, we want to, we don't want to blow cold air on, on startup in the heat mode, right? So we're going to delay that fan motor from coming on till we get to about an 89 degree coil temperature. Um, and that's a physical coil temperature, not saturation temperature, so not to be confused. It's a physical temperature. Once we get above that, the fan motor comes on, and, and we're at that point assured that we're going to blow warm air instead of cold air. All right, interesting. So and not many the, manufacturers have that. No, no, absolutely not. This is kind of like coming off the mini split technology. We don't have any cold very, flow on start. Very, very similar mini split technology, especially when we're talking about sensors and, and getting that information to dictate how the unit's gonna operate, speed of the compressor and so forth. Cool. Now we move on to T3. Um, we do have now the sensors that we're gonna talk about now is all in the outdoor unit. I will um, be your Vanna for you. We have a T3 coil sensor, which is uh, located on the outdoor coil. And, and this one is actually easy to see right there in front. Um, that T3 sensor is gonna have a few different functions. Um, one of the most popular ones is uh, defrost. Um, from there, we also have a liquid line sensor. It's gonna be labeled T3L. T3L is going to allow us to collect a liquid line temperature. We apply that with a condensing pressure, convert it to saturation, and now we can get our subcooling numbers from that sensor. Wow, no gauges, huh? No gauges, not, not to mention we got that check button. Remember that check button that yep. we have there? Yep. We can collect that data, view that information. Awesome. Another great aspect to that is it- I don't have to do charge. I won't lose charge or have to add charge. You don't have to do the math anymore. Yeah. The system is gonna do the math and give you that subcooling number. I can do math. Free. Maybe you don't have to do math, but okay. From there, we're gonna, you, from there, we're gonna move over to the T4 sensor. T4 sensor is our outdoor ambient sensor. It's gonna be located um, on, on the outdoor board, kind of down on the bottom. And that's gonna, again, it's gonna have multi-function, um, two, three, four different functionalities to, to T4. Um, but uh, the primary right out of the gate is our outdoor ambient. Um, we, then we're gonna move on to T5. T5 is our compressor discharge sensor. We got, to, we got to monitor that uh, that discharge temperature, and that's going to help determine whether it needs to speed up or slow down, just like the rest of the sensors. That's really important on our our, comp our compressor heating mode. That compressor discharge superheat opens up the EEV, protects it from getting flooded. We're looking for about a 30, 32 degree superheat mm -hmm. on a compressor discharge. So that sensor is very critical. It sounds like a pretty, pretty important sensor, for sure. T4 and T3, to my knowledge, if those sensors are bad, this unit will not run. They will not run, but if you have a T5 sensor, sure. it'll run for up to an hour and then give you a fall code. But some of the sensors will take you down right away if there's a defective sensor. Well, another functionality to that T4 is, and I'm not sure if we talked about this uh, previously, is this thing will operate down to minus 13. 
However, we get below minus 13. If the unit satisfies or shuts off after minus 13, we gotta get back above minus 13 before it comes back on. Let's clarify for the other people. And, and that's as done from that T4 sensor. So our unit, we say will shut off at minus 13, but if I have a thermostat call, it can operate at 15, minus 20, minus 25. It will still run, that is correct. But when it does satisfy, we're just going to lose a little bit more capacity at that point. Because yeah. remember, we're at 70% at, at that minus 13. 13. Yeah. From there, we're going to move on to compressor uh, suction temperature. Okay. Um, this is going to be labeled TH. Um, this is also going to go back to the board. Um, and that's going to give us our suction line temperature um, for, again, various operations. And that works for compressor discharge superheat now. So we can actually do our superheat with Absolutely. that sensor as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. As uh, two, we talked, um, you know, how this system operates and kind of what gives us that 100% capacity at five is that special plate heat exchanger. Um, some call that the economizer. Some call it the economizer. That is right here. That's a critical part of this whole unit. It is critical. And that's why we've got three additional sensors on that particular control Three cell. more. Three. three. Oh my gosh. That's T6A. That's on the injection inlet. That's at the bottom. That is at the, the bottom. Back side. Kind of, you know, you take that thing, split it in half, yeah. bottom on the back side. We got a T6B. That's the top of the back That is now going to be the injection outlet. Okay. Uh, and then we got a T7. Which is on the inlet. Or that, and that the T7 outlet side is, is labeled as our liquid service valve sensor yeah. coming off of, of that plate heat exchanger. Uh, in addition to that, we have a, a solenoid valve that was that's added to that. We're going to call that the SV8. That is the, the, the Molex plug or the connection on the board, SV8. And that, remember that solenoid valve, it's got to be 50 degrees. That's when we're going to open. Hey, well, how does it know 50 degrees? That's reading that from that T4 sensor. That T4 yeah, sensor. T4, pretty important sensor. It is. So we get, open that up at 50 degrees. Uh, and then we're going to send that through a, an additional electronic expansion valve. That expansion valve we're going to label EEVC. And they're almost down here side by side in the unit. So, so it's going to be close. hard, yeah. unless they're labeled, it's going to be hard to tell. But we know that the flow, we got to go through the solenoid, through that EEV, and through the plate heat exchanger. So that's how we're going to tell where that sensor is, or where things, that valve is located. One of the things with the Explorer View does, we can actually pull wires and see where they go through our unit here. So we can trace. And if you ever get stuck in there trying to figure out which one's which, the connector yes, will sir. give you that location. Yes, sir. Then you can pull that wire through and trace it through to see where it goes yep. to. Now, another great addition to this is the addition of another pressure transducer. What? In the previous we product, two. we only had one. Now we have two. Um, this is going to help us calculate that subcooling value that we talked about. So we don't have to do the math ourselves. So I heard rumor that we're now within one PSI. One to 1.5 PSI difference. Where we um, used to be 15. Yeah, it was somewhere around there. We absolutely. About 15. So, so we got a little bit more accurate on the pressure transducer. Uh, they definitely come a long ways, you know, in, in a, little bit of, a little bit of time. Um, and then, um, again, that, that pressure transducer being an addition, helping us with that subcooling value. Um, that pretty much, oh, there's actually a couple other sensors I forgot to mention. Um, there was a sensor that we used to call TF, or uh, inverter power module sensor. Um, it's going to be a little bit different on this unit. Um, and not necessarily a sensor directly on the board, but we are collecting that value as well, um, to, again, to aid in operation of this unit. So guys and gals, we also have a near application of Explorer View. This is a full-blown three-row coil. They still maintain the, hot, the hydrophilic coating to allow us to move water off the core relatively quickly and not ice up. We have our fan located over here on the side, and we have our serrated teeth that we can actually see on the blade. And that serration of the blade is to keep the noise quiet so we don't get this baffling or helicopter-style noise with that application. As uh, earlier movies showed, or early video showed, 29 by 29, 46 inches tall. So it's still relatively small that'll go through a gate, Absolutely. go through a fence in the backyard, Absolutely. not have major issues. And the reason for the additional height on the blade too, incorporated fan orifice so that we can maximize coil surface area on the outdoor unit. What else comes with that unit, Chris? We have ourselves a filter dryer. That is part of the package that comes in. We got our antenna, which we mounted, and there are two locations the antenna can go. One is a label here, one is a label here. Again, that depends on your application. We want it away from the house where it gets the best cell phone signal Absolutely. being Verizon. It's going to come up in a wrapped little plastic bag. We're going to actually remove that, kind of spread out the cable. That'll give us enough room to set it there. 
All right. Thank you for watching in today. You.